Hey, you have a car. August K. Me and Hoyt. Welcome to part 8 of the documentary narrating James Ronwick's uh, 1894 publication titled Irish Druids and Old Irish Religions. In this one, we'll be discussing the chapter of Two of the Magic. Uh, it'll be dealing with the manuscripts and also the mythologies associated with Two of the Now, I hope you enjoy. Grab on it. Irish Magic and Tua de Don. By far the most interesting of the people that formerly inhabited Ireland were the Tua, the Tua Dei, the Tua de Don, or the Danon. There is much mystery about them in Irish tradition. They were men, gods, or the Shi. They came, of course, from the east, calling in at Greece on the way, so as to increase their stock of magic and wisdom. Some trace them to the tribes of Dan, I note the Dan in Ezekiel. Mrs. Wilkes identifies them with the, the Danum of Isaiah. Quote, a nomad yet semi civilized people, unquote. Isaiah uh, calls them, quote, traveling companies of the Danum, unquote. The credulous four, ma four masters have a wonderful tales of two doings. In their invasion of Ireland, Tua had to deal with their dark ar aborigines known as the Furbolugs and are said to have slain 10,000 at the Battle of Maitoya Conga. Driven off the island by their foes, they travelled the, in the east, returning to the egg, in their exile as Finnish magicians and genuine druids. Mr. Gladstone, in Juventus Mundi, contends that the Dodona of are of uh, Phoenician extraction, and that a distinct near Tripoli or of Syria is known as Dani. He adds, Hosanias says that the landing place of Danos in the Argive coast was a temple of Poseidon, Genesis of Phoenician origin. After reigning Ireland for 200 years, the Tua were, it is narrated, invaded by the children of Galgas, who came from Egypt to Spain and sailed thence to Aaron under Milsis, uh, the leader of the Milesians. When the fleet was observed, the Danans caused a druidic fog to arise, so that land assumed the shape of a black pig, whence arose the name, another name for Ireland. Inishna Iliuk, or the Island of the Pig. The Milesians, however, employed their enchantments to return and defeated the Tua at, at Taltine, now Teltown, on the Black Water, at Drumlagan, now Drumlean, in Donegal. The Tua have been properly confounded with the Danes. Others give them a German origin, or an Emedian one. Wilde describes them as a large and fairly and fair complexion, carrying long bronze leaf-shaped swords, of a Grecian style, and he thinks them the builders of the so-called Danish four stones or castles, but not of the stone circles. McFribris, 200 years ago, wrote, Everyone who is fair-haired, revengeful, large, and every plunderer professors of music and entertainment performances, who are adepts of juridical and magical arts, they are the descendants of the two Danans. Quote, the Danans, O'Flanagan wrote in 1808, are said to have been well acquainted with Athens, and the memory of their kings, poets, and poetesses, female philosophers of highest repute for wisdom and learning, is still preserved with reverent regret in some of our old manuscripts of the best authority. Unquote. Referring to these persons as kings Dagda, Ag Agamon, and Delbert, to Brig, daughter of Dagda, to Edina, and Danana, he exclaimed, Such are the lights that burst through the glooms of ages. The Tua, G.W. Atkinson proposes, quote, must be a highly intellectual race that imported to Ireland our homes, round towers, architecture, metalwork, and above all, the exquisite art which come down to us in our wonderful illuminated Irish manuscripts, unquote. The polished Tua were certainly contrasted with the rude Celts. Arthur Clive declares the civilization came in with an earlier race than the Celts and retired with the conquest by the latter. Bars and Shannon Keys, remarks R.J. Duffy, fastly attributed to each of the two to dawn chiefs some particular art or department over which they held him to preside. As Bartok to music, the author of Old Celtic Remains writes, By the Milesians and their descendants, they were regarded as gods, and ultimately, in the imagination of the people, they became known in Ireland called the Shi. They conquered the Furbolugs and Iberian or Belgic people at the Battle of Moitoire. 
there is a strong suspicion of her connection with the old idolatry. The last king was Macrenia, which bears a verbal relation to the son. The Reverend R. Smitty assumes them descendants of the Athenian, the fire god, our son. In the Chronicles of Columba, we read that a priest who built in Tyrconnell a temple of great beauty with an altar of fine glass adorned with the representation of the sun and moon. Under our king Dagda, the great, the sun god, his wife, the goddess Bone, the two us were once pursued by the river Boyne. This Dagda became king of the Shi when his people were defeated by the warlike Milesians, and the Tua, as Professor Rees says, formed an invisible world of their own in hills and mounds. In the book of Ballymote, Finton, who lived before the flood, describing his adventure, said, quote, After them the Tua day arrived, concealed in their dark clouds, I ate my food with them, though at such a remote period, unquote. Mrs. Bryant in Celtic Ireland observes tradition assigns the Tua generally an immortal life in the midst of the hills and beneath the seas. Thence they is issued to mingle freely with the mortal sons of men practising the individual arts in which they were great of yore, when they won Aaron from the fur bollocks by science, and when the Milesians won Aaron from them by valour. That was really was people whom the legends of the Tua shadow of fort is probable, but it is most almost certain that all the tales about them are poetical myths. Elsewhere, we note the Tua crosses, with illustrations such as the cross at Monster Boys of professions, doves, gods, snakes, and etc. One Irish author, Valenci, has said, The church festivals themselves in our Christian calendar are but a direct transfers from the Tua de Dawn ritual. Their very names in Irish are identically the same as those which were distinguished by their earlier race. That writer assuredly did not regard the Tua as myths. Fiach. And Patrick's disciples sang, quote, The tools of Aaron prophesied the new times of peace would come. Unquote. Magic, or Geodocta, was attributed to the Irish Tua and gave them the traditional reputation for wisdom. Quote, Why is this the Tua de Dawn, as observes A. G. Gyogan, is saying that still can be heard in the highlands of Donegal, in the glens of Connacht, and on the seaboard of the southwest of Ireland. Unquote. In Celtic Ireland, we read, quote, The Irish worship the She, and the bards identify the She with the Tua de Dawn. The identity of the Tua de Dawn with the degenerate She of Christian times appears plainly in the fact that while the She are the halls of Tua, the She are the, prop are the people of the She, and sometimes called the She simply. Unquote. Confusing or what? <laughs> the old Irish literature abounds with magic. Druidic spells were sometimes in this form. Quote, I impose upon thee that thou mayest wander to and fro along the river. Unquote. Etc. In the chase, a hero found the lost golden ring of a maiden. Quote, but scarce to the shore the prize could bring, when by some blasting ban, Ah, piteous tale, the Fenian king grew a withered grey old man. Of cool son, then Caval sought, what wizard the non foe had wrought. Such piteous change, and Fionn replied, T'was Gillen's daughter, me she bound, by a sacred spell to search the tide, till the ring she'd lost was found. Search and find her, she gave him a cup, feeble he drinks, potion speeds, through every joint and pore, to palsied age fresh youth succeeds. Fion of the swift and slender steeds becomes himself once more. Unquote. Druidic sleeps are frequently mentioned as, quote, or that small dwarf whose power could steep the Fenian host in a death-like sleep. Unquote. Kendi's fictions of the Irish Celts relate a number of magical tales. The Aline Annan might as well have been feared when we are told of the revenge one took upon a woman. Quote, being safe from the eyes of the household, she muttered some words, and drawing a druidic wand from under her mantle, she struck her with it, and changed her into the most beautiful wolfhound. Unquote. The Liyanin reminds one of the classical incubi and succubi, yet Kennedy admits that, quote, in the stories found among the native Irish, there are always evident more of the Christian element than among the Norse or Germanic collections. Unquote. The story of Finton's ventures from the days of the flood to the coming of Patrick, quote, has been regarded as a pagan myth, says one, in keeping with the doctrine of transmigration, 
unquote. In the annals of Clonmac Noise, we hear of seven magicians working against the breaker of an agreement. Bruga of the Boyne was a great Didonian magician. Jocelyn assures us that one prophesied coming of Patrick a year before his arrival. Inga Satua had a magical place on the Boyne. The healing stone of Connell had been supposed to be a remnant of Tua magic. It is shaped like a dumbbell and is still believed in by many. In spite of lectures of the learned Bukhari, declaring the story, quote, nothing but the vague and general assertions, unquote, Irish tradition supports the opinion of Pliny. That is, as to magic, there were those in the British Isles capable of instructing even the Persians themselves in these arts. But Okori admits that the European druidical system was but the offspring of the Eastern augurs, and the Tuas came from the East. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. They wrote or repeated charms, as in the Hoshjallars of Turkey, still write niches. Adder stones were used to repel evil spirits, not less than to cure diseases. One writing in 1699 speaks of seeing a stone suspended from the neck of a child as a remedy for whooping cough. Monuments ascribed to Tua are to be seen near the Boyne, and that try to doubt, note, and etc. According to tradition, this brought people into Ireland, the magic glaive from Goris, the magic cauldron from Muras, the magic spear from Phineas, and the magic Leofal, or talk incarnation stone from Phalas. Even though the last is also to have said been introduced by the Milesians when they came with Pharaoh's daughter. Enthusiastic, the Freemasons believed that the two were members of the mystic body, I suppose magic being but the superior learning of their imported from the East. If not spiritless in the modern sense of the term, they have also been skimmed in hypnotism, inducing others to see or hear what their masters wish them to see or hear. When the two were contending with the fur bullocks, the Druids on both sides prepared to exercise their enchantments. <coughs> Being a fair match in magical powers, the warriors concluded not to employ them at all, but have a fair fight between themselves. This, however, is one of the tales of poetic uh, chronicles, of which Kennedy's Irish fiction reports, quote, The minstrels were plain, pious and very ignorant Christians who believed in nothing worse than a little magic and witchcraft, unquote. This was surely a comfort to the Christians that magic working druids were often checkmates by, checkmated by the saints. When Columba, in answer to inquiry by Brocken, the magician, said he would be sailing away in three days, the other replied that he should not be able to do so, as a contrary wind and dark mist should be raised to prevent the departure. Yet the Kuldi ventured forth in the teeth of the opposing breeze, sailing against it and the mist, in like manner Druid often contracted Druid. Thus treat Dru Tua Druidesses. Bob, Maka and Mark Hagen brought down darkness and showers of blood and fire, on the Firbolgs at Tara for three days, under the spell was broken by the Firbolg magic bearers. Cesara, Nathok, and Ignathok. Spells and charms were always uttered in verse and song. Not a mode of bringing a curse was through the chewing of tums by enchantresses. Fal the Tua made use of the Wheel of Light, which somehow got connected with Simon Magus by the bards, and which enabled the professor to ride through the air and perform other wonders. We also hear of the of Sword of Light, and the magic cauldron known as the Brudens. Now I'd like to note in the passage I just read out to you that uh, Mark Hagen is also Morrigan. So above Maka and Morrigan. I will continue there now. Some of the two druids had special powers. As a gift of knowledge in Fionn, a drink too given from his hands would heal any wound or cure any disease. Angus had the power of travelling on the wings of cool east wind. Credna, the Tua Smith, made a silver hand for Nudat, or Nuada, which is properly fitted on his wrist by Dienkept, the Irish Isachus. To complete the operation, Miak, son of Dienkept, took the hand and infused feeling and motion into every joint and vein, as if it was a natural hand. It is right to observe, however, according to Cormac's glossary, Dienkept meant God of Curing. Fiona's elsewhere is acquired special privilege by accidentally sucking some art and resting upon a mysterious sound of knowledge. He thus acquired the power of divination. Whenever he desired to know any particular thing, he only had to suck his thumb and a whole chain of circumstances would be present in his mind. The magic rod, 
is also well known to be the means of transforming objects or persons. The children of Lur were changed by a magic wand into four swans that flew to Loch Derg for 300 years and subsequently removed to the Sea of Moyle between Aaron and Alba. Transformation stories are numerous in the ancient legends of Ireland, a specimen given by the genealogy of Cork uh, Leda. A hag, ugly and bald, uncouth and loathsome to behold. The subject of some previous transformation seeks deliverance from her enchanted condition by some when marrying her, when, quote, suddenly she passed into another form, she assumed a form of wondrous beauty, unquote. Some enchanters assume the appearance of giants. The Fenians of old dare not hunt a certain quarter from fear of one of the monsters. Cam had been thus described in the story of Diermit. Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> quote, Whom neither weapon wounds nor water drowns is so great his magic. He is but one eye only in the fair middle of his black forehead, and there is a thick collar of iron round that giant's body, and he is fated not to die until there has been struck upon him three strokes of the iron club that he has. He sleeps on top of the quicken tree by night, and he remains at his foot by day to watch it. Unquote. The berries of that tree had the exhilarating quality of wine, and he who tasted them, though he was 100 years old, would renew the strength of 30 years. The fate of the children of Turin, in an Irish manuscript, gives a curious narrative of two uh, days of magic. It was published by the Society for Preservation of Lang Irish Language. The sons had to pay heavy eric, or damages, on account of, of murder. One failed and died of his wounds. Lou got helped by Brian the Druid against the Fomorians, who were cruelly oppressing the two us, exacting an ounce of gold from each, under the penalty of cutting their noses off. Druidical spells were freely used by Lou, the hero of the story. The Eric in question required the three sons to procure the three apples from the Garden of the Hesperides. The skin of the pig belonged to the King of Greece, which could cure diseases and wounds. Two magic horses from the King of Sicily, seven pigs, pi sorry, seven pigs from the King of the Golden Pillars, etc. Once on their adventures, Brian changed them with his wand into tree hawks so that they may seize the apples. But the king's daughters, by magic, changed themselves into griffins and chased them away, though the druid, by superior power, then turned them into harmless swans. One son gained the pig's skin as a reward for reciting a poem. A search for the island of uh, Fiancara beneath the sea was a difficulty, but we're told, quote, Brian put on his water dress, unquote. Securing a headdress of glass, he plunged into the water. He had a fortnight walking in the salt sea, seeking the land. Lou came into contact with a sea cavalcade from the land of France. His adventure with Cian illustrated ideas of transformation. Cian, when pursued, saw a great herd of swine near him, and he struck himself with a druidical wand in the shape of one of the swine. Lou was puzzled to know which was the druidical pig, but striking his two brothers with a wand, he turned them into two slender fleet hounds that gave tongue ravenously upon the trail of the druidic pig into which a spear was thrust. He cried out that he was keen and wanted to return to his human state, but the brothers completed their deed of blood. Not only the pig, but brown bulls and red cows figure in the stories of Irish magic. We read of a straw thrown into a man's face with the utterance of a charm, and the poor fellow suddenly going mad. Prince Comgan was struck with a wand, and boils and ulcers came over him, until he gradually sunk into a state of idiocy. A blind druid carried about him the secret of power on a straw placed in his shoe, and which another sharp fellow managed to steal. Illumination by the palms of hands in the cheek of throwing into magical sleep was made another mode of procuring answers into questions. Kirua, druid to Cormac of Cashel, saw information concerning a foe after making a druidical fire of the mystical mountain ash, but he was beaten in his enchantments by Marut, the king of monsters druid who even transformed by breath the three wise men of Cashel into stones, which may be seen to this day. That he accomplished with charms and uh, fire under the Rowan tree, the virtues of Rowan wood are appreciated to this day in Munster, where the prevalent wives secure better butter by putting a hoop of it around their churns. Tuas had a reputation for their ability in the interpretation of dreams and omens, and their skills and auguries. Some druids, like Maru, could fly by the aid of magical wings. He was, however, no Irishman but Ma, the divine druid who brought his magic to Gordon Abdom, and was clever enough to form a woman out of flowers deemed by poetic natures a more romantic origin than from the river man. Manon, son of Tua Chieftain, 
he was given the name to Isle of Man, rolled on three legs as a wheel through the Druidic Mist. He subsequently became the King of the Fairies. Professor Rees speaks of the Tua as tribes of the goddess Danu, though the term he says is somewhat vague, as are, are also the others of same import, import such as Tua Dei, the tribes of the goddess, and Fer Dei, the men of the goddess. He further remarks that Tua de Dodon contain among them light and dark divinities, and those standing sometimes in relation of parents and offspring to one another. Massey has the following philosophical argument for the Tua, saying, The Tua, found on the underworld, denotes the gate of worship, adoration, the worshippers, Tua Tatuan, would signify the place of worship within the Mound of Earth, the underground sanctuary. The Babylonian temple of Bitsigadu was in the gate of the deep. The Tua, or portal of Ptah's temple, faced the north wind, and the Irish territory is the north hillside north. The Tua's entrance was also glossed by the English Twat. The Egyptian Tuantai are the people of the lower hemisphere, the north, which was the type of the Earth Temple. The Tua are still known in Ireland by the name of the Divine Folk, an equivalent for Tuanti for the worshippers. The Reverend R. Smitty fancies the people as Danon or Deanian, who are descendants of Dean, the fire god, an old manuscript calls them the people of the god Dana. Clive, therefore, asks if they were simply the old gods of the country. Joyce, in Irish names, says, quote, This mysterious race, having undergone a gradual deification, became confounded and identified with local gods, and ultimately superseded them altogether. Unquote. He recalls the Kerry Mountain's name of Dachik Danaean. He considers the Tua, quote, a people of superior intelligence and artistic skill, and that they were conquered and driven into remote districts by the less intelligent but more warlike Milesian tribes who succeeded them. Unquote. Lady Ferguson, in her story of the Irish before the conquest, has the idea that the Danans, being kingsmen to the Firbolugs, that they came from the region of the Don and Vistula under Nuad of the Silver Hand, defeating Echod, king of the Firbolugs, at Maitaira, and ruling Ireland for 200 years. There are certainly workers in metal and have therefore been confounded by monkish writers with smiths. St. Patrick's prayer against smiths and the traditional connection between smiths and magic can thus be understood. They, according to the Book of Invasions, quote, By force of port and spell and wicked magic and conjuration horrible to hear could set the ministry of hell at work and raise the slaughter army from the earth and make them live and breed and fight again. Few could their arts withstand or charms unbind, unquote. They were notorious in Sligo, a county so full of so-called druidical remains. In Caramore, with 64 stone circles, there must have been once been a large population. Why, asks Wood Martin, is the narrow strip of country so thickly strewn with monuments of the dead? But he learned that the Fomorian pirates, possibly from the Baltic, swarmed on that wild coast. He especially notes the tales of Indek, a mighty Fomorian druid, grandfather of Dreadal Balor of the Evil Eye. The mythic grey cow belonged to Lon MacLeamtha, the first smith amongst the Tuas who succeeded in making an iron sword. At the Battle of Moitaira, Uthain was the druid harper of the Tua. Of Torna, last of pagan bards, it was declared that he, quote, sprung of the Tuas, the Donans, far renowned for dire enchanting arts and magical power, unquote. But as Miss Brooke tells us, quote, most of the Irish romances are filled with Donan enchantments as wild as the wildest of Aristotle's found fictions, and not all behind them in beauty. Unquote. It was Dr. Barnard, Bishop of Killaloo, who traced the race of visitors from South Britain, saying, quote, The Belgae and Damani, the posterity in Ireland, were called Fir Bulgs and Tua de Donan. Unquote. In a destructive battle between the manly, manly bloody robust Fenians of Fionn and the white tooted handsome Tua de Dons, when the latter saw fresh core of Fenians advancing, it was recorded that having enveloped themselves in the Fife, they made it a precipitate retreat. Eubians does Gordelchur Celtic does not omit mention of these wonder workers. He calls to mind the fact that, like the Greeks of the Golden Age, they became invisible, but continued their relations with men, that Christian writers changed them into mortal kings and chronicles, that their migrations and deities resembled those of Hesiod that they continue to appear in animal or human forms, 
though more commonly as birds, that ancient legends record their descent to earth from the blue heavens. He brings forward a number of the old Irish stories about the Tuas. When defeated by the sons of Mill, they sought refuge in subterranean places. One Dagan, a word variant of the god Dogda, exercised such influence that the sons of Mill were forced, for peace sake, to make a treaty with him. His palace retreat below what was Bruna Broy, or the castle of the Boyne, the burial place of Quimthan near Nuar at Brugna Boyne, was chosen because his wife was a fairy of the race of Tua. In the Tombo Cooley, there's much about the she, or a chanted palace. Dagda had his harp stolen by the Fomorians, though it was recovered later on. The son of Dagda was Angus. With the distribution of subterranean palaces took place, somehow or another, this young fellow was forgotten. Asking to be allowed to spend the night of one, he was unwilling to change his quarters and stay the next day. He then absolutely refused to depart, since time was only night and day, thus retaining possession. The same two of hero fell in love with a fair harper, who appeared to him in a dream. <coughs> the search aided by the fairies was successful in finding it, the lady after a year and a day. This is the wandering of Angus. Uh, care was the lady in question. It was in his second battle that Ohm carried off the sword of Tetra, king of the Fomorians. This sword had the gift of speech, or rather, said Jubianville, it seemed to speak for the voice which was heard according to a Christian historian, only that of a demon hidden in the blade. Still, the writer of this Irish epic remarked that in the ancient time men adored weapons of war and considered them as supernatural protectors. The Book of Conquest allows Tua <coughs> that the Tua were descended from Japheth, although in some way demons are in Christian language heathen deities. One Irish word is often applied to them, Libra or phantoms. It is also believed that at least one Tua warrior named Brass was speaking native Irish to the original Aboriginal Ferbullocks. A writer in Anecdote to Oxen is of an opinion that very different notions accounts exist at the different periods of Irish epic le literature concerning them. He declares that, excepting their names, no very particular traces of them come down to us. The most distinct of the offerances about the race points to the existence of war goddesses. While it gives a definite reason why we know so little about the two of the dawn, is because, quote, those who took down the legends from the mouths of the bards and the analysts or those who subsequently transcribed them were Christian missionaries, whose object was to obliterate every vestige of the ancient form of faith. Unquote. The distortion of truth about the singular foreign people makes it so difficult to understand who or what they were. To us, they were always seem to be enveloped in some sort of druidic fog, so that we may class them with men, heroic demigods, or gods themselves, according to our fancy. <laughs>